but in Christianity, the chicanery was there from the start. The father figure appears. It was 600 years later that the Jesus Christ, who looks like Jesus Christ with a beard and an adult man, appeared on, on, on iconography. For 600 years, he was a beard beardless youth. Well, how did that happen? For hundreds and hundreds of years. It, finally, they discovered in the 20th century, you know, these critics of, of Christianity, discovered that all the imagery that Christianity uses is pagan. And all the, the, the images that were apparently were on the labyrinths, you know, on these underground uh, labyrinths and underground tunnels, allegedly uh, the hiding places of the Christians during the Roman persecution. No, 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 sorry, wrong. The fish, the little boy standing on the fish, that's all Dionysus, the symbol of the sun, and all sorts of Christian iconography it is nothing to do with Christianity. It was, they predated it, they've done the carbon dating, whatever you want to call it. The archaeologists know this far predates the rise of Jesus Christ and so on and so on. And then all that yap about the end of days, which every every decade they're trying to tell you. They're walking around with placards telling you about the, you know, uh, the world will come to an end, this, this millennial angst, and, uh, or even the idea that Jesus was crucified on a cross. False, you know what I mean? So, uh, and then what happens in the New Age movement, as Christian Moody so rightly said, now what you guys are doing, you're looking for that leader, you're looking for that Messiah, you're looking for that Maitreya, you're looking for that world leader, world teacher. Hi, how are you guys? Is everyone here? Doing a little bit of a sound check, making sure that everyone can hear me. If I'm too loud, or if I am, if I'm too, am I too low or too high? Just give me some thumbs up. based upon the frequency of the <laughs> his energy. So that's really funny, but it's it's really different. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell you what he's saying. Okay. You can start whenever you're ready. <laughs> just listening and I'm repeating that. He said, my name has been used for many purposes. To punish, to kill, to love, to save, to restrict. None of these things I taught when I was incarnated. I came as a revolutionary to transform the minds of those beings who existed in that time and place. Not to, offer, not to offer salvation that the church has told you about, but a salvation of freedom. A salvation of creativity and a liberation of the mind. As all of the beings that I currently channel today, you know, many archangels, many ascended masters, many, many beings. <laughs> Um, many, many. <laughs> so that's what I've been doing since then, but growing up in a very religious climate it was a little bit difficult to um, to go into a Southern Baptist background with a family who, when you try to mention that you saw something, they would say, oh, you're an imaginative child. <laughs> or, oh, you know, um, are, are you sure that you didn't dream that and you're just having a dream? <laughs> incredibly supportive and but then others were kind of like always questioning and always trying to discern exactly what was going on so I thank all of you for being here today we do this channeling normally once a year on Easter we did it twice last year because we wanted to see if we could bring him in in trance 
um, that I just really preferred to bring him in in a way that I could actually see his presence where I was actually there because it just feels so much better to me. So that's that. I prefer that method of channeling. Trance channeling, just I get so deep in the trance that I almost fall asleep. <laughs> and then it's hard to get me to come to and all those sort of things. So, bring a necessary and exciting turning point. Your collective beliefs are the key to these turn of events. Being peaceful, calm, and individually quickening. Humanity has been balancing a precarious collective belief that seems to vacillate between fear and acceptance. 2016 is a year of purification that will assist you in reaching into the depths of your full potential as human beings so that you may begin your own individual journeys into your spiritual purposes for being here on planet Earth. Something that quite a lot of people have tried to do, which I regard as a soft option, which is to say, well, Christianity is fine and Jesus was a wonderful person, but it's just that it's been perverted by the churches. It's organized religion we don't like. That's the usual bolt hole that people flee to, as you must have noticed. And I think that's a distinction without very much difference. Either there is a God who can make a human sacrifice out of his son. A very horrible thought when you think about it. I mean, God, the Old Testament God even stops Abraham from doing that. Um, and that by some mysterious osmosis, this is redemptive. This torture death is redemptive for us, born long after it, who would have tried to stop it if we could. Either that's a moral tale or it is not. In my opinion, it's a very immoral tale. In fact, you quote C.S. Lewis, of all people, saying to believe in the literal Jesus as he did is to accept him as a kind of lunatic. Yes, I, I mentioned, I give a bunch of these citations. I mean, Thomas Jefferson took this view in his, in his famous Jefferson Bible, which excises all the supernatural claims and just leaves you with the Sermon on the Mount and a few parables, and doesn't accept the divinity of Jesus, but says great teachings. Ernest Renan in his Vie de Jésus says much the same. C.S. Lewis, I think, is more honest when he says, look, this is a cop-out. If this man isn't the son of God, then his teachings would be evil, as they, they tell you that the world is coming to an end, you should abandon your family, give no thought to thrift or investment or architecture or anything of the sort. It's all over. Come and follow me and throw, throw aside everything else. If what you're saying isn't true, if you're just another ranter, another false messiah, then those preachings would obviously be immoral. You can't say, you can't have the one without the other. Streams and incarnations. Understanding the higher self. Is it possible for a multiple higher selves to be un incarnated as one human being? He's nodding. Who is your higher self or selves? Yes, is not strictly possible it is concurrent with all that is happening. You and we no longer incarnate as a whole soul. We incarnate as fractals of one united vast higher self. This is what humans are calling soulmates, twin flames, other half, other part. All of you incarnate in this facet. basically formally present the results of the research that Atheists United helped me fund uh, six years ago. Um, three years ago, uh, I presented the first product, first fruits of that research product um, project, uh, which was Proving History, uh, Bayes' Theorem and the Quest for the Historical Jesus, which was the first part of solving this problem of how we would answer the question whether Jesus existed or not. And that book was about methodology figuring out what methods are being used to answer this question, what methods should be used to answer this question. And I found um, 
Not only did I find that the methods didn't work, that they were either logically fallacious or they were being applied fallaciously, every other expert who'd written a dedicated study of the methods in Jesus studies had come to the same conclusion. Uh, and that's what I found out. So I actually document that in Proving History and show that the attempts to use these methods to extract historical facts about Jesus from the Gospels don't work. Uh Out, um, like commentaries and homilies and things like that and just look at things like gospels and epistles um, more most of the stuff Christians were writing in the second to fourth century are forgeries or fakes um, so in fact it was the normal mode of Christian composition was to make stuff up and document scholarship and evidence in on the historicity of Jesus um, one of the things that's often denied by defenders of historicity is that there were dying and rising gods before Jesus. Um, I found that, that that attack is not defensible. In fact, the evidence is beyond clear uh, that there's definitely, absolutely were dying and rising gods before Jesus. In fact, they were dying and rising personal savior gods at that. 